Shadow Cave. Once upon a time, a woman covered her head in a square of black shakard silk with the pressed black flowers in the fabric and that she had hemmed, covered her head so she couldn't see and went on a little phantasmic journey. Slipping into a hole at the base of the altar, she began journeying. First there was a dude at the cave entrance who was made out of crystal. He put a jewel in her forehead. Around her was a coiled cobra with its head sticking fiercely out from her belly. She thanked the dude who was silent and solidified into still crystal sentinel. The tunnel was dark. It was the dark of the moon. She came to a black lake that shimmered with an unearthly light. She dove deep. Blackness filled her. She was searching her darkness, her forgotten selves, her buried subjectivities, where she was split. Before her breath burst, she emerged in a large cave where Paleolithic peoples were gathered. There were fire tortures everywhere. Some people were huddled. Groups were dancing, some smashing rocks and mixing with the dust with water or spittle. A few were painting on the walls. They were dressed in animal skins, unkempt perhaps, but dignified. She had entered a cathedral of the ancients. She was seriously in awe. Dislocations and passageways were opening. She was drawn to a woman in a quiet corner who glowed. Warm brown, she sat, focused on grinding red ochre on a flat stone, and showed her children how to paint the cave walls with it. She is painting, dancing, bison. The stranger sits near her, watching, never wanting to leave. How can this be a shadowed self? We are meeting shadowed selves. After a while, the woman gets up and continues on. A fat white man wearing a loincloth, bearing a club, attempts to scare her away. She hisses at him with her cobra, and he runs off. She walks the endless, fathomless darkness. She's trying to face her fears, but they are hiding. Nothing. Despair grows. Her feet are cut on the sharp rocks. She won't turn back until she's found her disparate selves. The grand plan to enter her shadow world seems ridiculous, hyperbolic. She is mocked by the emptiness. It's barren, a place where no light has ever shone, where bleak rock reigns. She might get lost in the depths of this search in the dark cave. In a glowing, milky light, a box appears. The front panel is mirrored, and she sees herself. She sees herself reflected. Is she who she is? She sees a ghostly woman looking back at her, not the made-up woman who composes herself in the mirror every morning before leaving. She sees an inverse of herself. The figure in the mirror is unsympathetic to her, spits on her, swears at her. The world is reversed and reflections reign. The dark sister in the mirror can't leave the looking glass. The glass becomes dark and she sees into the box. Inside is a woman child who is unkempt and hysterical. While fully grown, she is chubby like a two-year-old. She is cramped, squatting on her haunches in the tiny space, her blinking eyes, her drooling rage. The inverse woman in the mirror is the guardian of the woman child within. The lady wearing the shakard silk with the pressed black flowers and bearing the black candle to see by opens the box, lets the stench out and reaches for the prisoner, who she takes in her arms, cradling like a baby. On her way back, she carries a woman child in her arms and the inverse woman from the mirror on her back, and later she collects the cave painter and her children and carries them on her back too, and they all dive into the black water, hanging on to her. When she emerges from the dream and is sitting at her altar, the black candle nearly burnt out, and removes the black silk covering her head, they are all together in her. She's an assemblage of forgotten selves who've emerged to merge into her. Her strange dance across psychic cave walls, she's not sure what it means, if it means anything. Still, she's not repulsive to herself anymore, nor is afraid of her shadows. Supplicating, she gives the serpent of protection back to the great lady herself, who never appears, but who's always in the background, 
or in the ground of being. After that, she lived much more happily in herself, and things went on as they do.